Joseph, God bless you for being here on radio. What message you have today for us? God bless you. Nice to be here. <laughs> today I have a message about uh, hell. Good news oh. for the people who go to hell. What? The <laughs> How can that be? <laughs> the gospel has good news for everyone. How can that be good news for people who go to hell? Well, I want to talk about the Satanists and the people, uh, atheists, that they accuse God that He enjoy making people suffer in hell forever. Yeah, that's, very, that's very sad. I even heard stories, some Satanists were talking in a debate. Uh, I just watched her for very little. They were saying, what kind of God is He that can enjoy seeing people burning forever and yelling and screaming. What kind of enjoyment is that? Yeah, that's one of their strongest arguments against God yeah. because it looks like it's too much. Eternity suffering yeah. is kind of long. I heard one guy saying, uh, have you ever tried to put a hands on the fire? See how long you can keep it there? Yeah. You try to keep it there for half a second or whatever, one second or two. And then see, imagine you, your whole body burning like this forever. I mean, mm -hmm. forever is a long time. Yeah. Okay. So it's like uh, that encourages people not to believe in God because the Bible says God is love. So yes. a God of love, you know, a God who says love your enemy, etc. Et then is he going to turn around and enjoy people burning forever in hell? No, but can I confess something? I was sometimes wondering the same. And not because yeah. I'm an atheist, but I was just yeah. having questions. Is that possible? Eternity of suffering? Isn't that a lot? Not because I doubt God. I just don't know. I just yeah. don't understand. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know many Christians say that people will not burn forever in hell, but they don't have scriptures, so it's just a confusion. Yeah, there are doctrines about the eternal reconciliation, that one day everybody will be saved, uh, even the people in hell and even the devil. Really? Well, the problem with that this guy is they don't have scriptures for that. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, the good news I have for the people who are lost uh, and the people who will go to hell is that... Uh, Hell is a place of execution, not of suffering. So what do you mean? In hell, nobody suffers. They just die. How can they not suffer? I'm going to show you. Can you please <laughs> show us? In fact, you have to be careful if you say that people going to hell, they will not suffer. Because that's a big statement. And then everybody who rejects Jesus will say, well, even if I go to hell, I won't suffer. So we need to have scriptures over this. Because I know there are scriptures like... I read in Matthew 25, there is a scripture which says about eternal fire. Really? Matthew 25, 41. And he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So there is an everlasting fire burning. Okay. This yeah, is but Jesus it doesn't speaking. say they're going to suffer in there. It says that uh, they're going to be thrown there. But that doesn't mean they're going to be leaving in there. And Brother Joseph, there is another question in Mark 9.43. It says exactly the same. That if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands. Mm -hmm. Go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. And 44. Where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. So okay. it says clearly, and I think there are many other scriptures where it yeah, says everlasting but, but it, fire. It repeats the same like here. It's all about hell, fire, worms, yeah. etc. Okay, but it doesn't talk about your soul being hell. In this time. It talks about the worm is in hell. It, it talks about the fire is in hell. It talks about your, your dead body be, being in hell. But it doesn't talk about your living soul. Understand? I check the whole Bible up and down, every scripture. And doesn't talk any way about souls but living we know, in hell. We know that when somebody dies, the soul goes either to heaven or to hell. Yes, but the, it goes to hell to die, not to live there. Do you understand? No. <laughs> okay, let me show you. Go to the book of Revelation, please. Book of Revelation, yes. Okay, okay Revelation 2.11. Okay. 
He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Okay, what is this? What is he talking about here? Um, uh, uh, what's the second death? How many, how many times can you die? Well, you die once and your body goes to the cemetery and your soul goes to heaven or hell. Exactly. So, wh what can die after that? Mm, there's the soul left. The soul, that's it. Understand? The soul dies. In fact, if you go to Revelation 20, it, uh, read it. Uh, okay. By the judgment from 11 till 15. 11. Yeah. 20, 11 until 15. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Second death again. You understand? Yes. So, you understand that we, we are flesh and soul, and if you have Jesus Christ, you are a born again spirit. So like it says in, in 2 Thessalonians 5.23, it says we are spirit, soul, and body. We are, we the Christians. Mm -hmm. But the non-Christians are only body and soul. Okay. Because in Adam and Eve, the spirits, the eternal spirit, uh, was uh, de uh, departed yeah. from them, and they were left uh, flesh and soul. Okay. Okay. So the first death, when your flesh dies, yes. And then this, the only other thing that can die after your flesh is your soul, and you're dead forever. There is nothing left of you, unless you've been born again. So your soul becomes immortal in function of receiving Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, then you are born again. So you are three entities, Second Thessalonians 5.23, spirit, born again spirit, soul becomes immortal yeah. when you get saved, and flesh. The flesh dies, but your soul and the Holy Spirit live forever. Now, the people who are not born again, they are not uh, spirit, soul, and body, but they are soul and body. The body dies, there is only another uh, death uh, that can happen. There is only, uh, there is only the, the soul that can die after that. And that's why it says uh, in Revelation 2.11, he that overcomes shall not suffer the second death. Uh, and in Revelation 20.11, it says, uh, this is the second death. Okay. Okay. Anyone who was not uh, found in the book of life is thrown to the lake of fire. Now, let me give you another scripture. Okay. Yes. Now, this is a revelation the Lord gave me a while ago. Okay. Really, really opened uh, very clear. Go to Isaiah 66. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay, 22. 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. So what is he talking about here? He's talking about new heavens, yes. new earth, the eternity, okay? 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. You understand? He's talking about the new earth, uh, the people. I mean, or, at the end, end. Yeah, at the end, the end. I explained this in some other teachings that the white throne judgment. That's after the millennium. After the mi after the millennium, there is a white throne judgment. Yeah. I explained this in other some other teachings. I don't have time now. Okay, there are people who will live in the flesh in the new earth. Who don't go to heaven. Yes. And they will go worship every Sabbath. Okay, now here is the bomb. Verse twenty-four. Isaiah sixty-six twenty-four. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm does not die, and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. You understand? The same words that Jesus quoted in Mark chapter 9. The worm shall not die, the fire is not quenched. Do you understand? The same words of Jesus. And uh, what is he talking about here? Yeah, Jesus uh, uh, quoted the scripture, but the scripture, what is he talking about? Is he talking about the living souls? No, really carefully. They shall look upon the carcasses. The carcass what is, that? is dead body. In fact, I'm reading here from the Old King James, it says carcass. But if you go to the Amplify, it says dead bodies. You mm -hmm. have the Amplify there? Yes. It says the dead bodies of the rebellious man. 
You understand? Mm -hmm. So in other words, this is a good translation, because that's what it really means in the original Hebrew. So it's talking about the dead uh, uh, carcasses that will burn forever. You know, like uh, Moses' uh, uh, bush was burning but not consuming, it was always, uh, it was always standing. Yes. Moses saw the bush, okay? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is the same. The body shall burn but shall not consume. The, so de the dead body shall burn, not the, not the screaming soul. But the body doesn't go in the cemetery and that's it? No, we're talking about the soul. The soul has a body, it's a spiritual body. Ah. Do you understand? You know, I know that some people are like Bill Wees uh, had experiences, they went to the spirit world, they saw people throwing the lake of fire. But then also the Luke 16. Ju yeah, it, just it a says. second, yeah. But Bill Wees, what Bill Wees saw was a projection of the future, you understand? It no, there is nobody in the lake of fire right now because the judgment has not been given. The judgment shall be given after the millennium, Revelation chapter 20, after the thousand years are expired, the devil shall be thrown in the lake of fire, and then everyone who is not written in the book of life. And that, it says, is the second death. Luke 16, what? There was the story of the rich man and yeah, yeah. Lazarus. Yeah, exactly. He was burning. In the, in the old King James, it says he was thrown in hell, and in hell he was begging uh, Abraham for a yes. little bit of water. Well, that, that translation is wrong uh, when it says hell. It should have said Hades. If you go to the original Greek, it doesn't say hell, lake of fire. It says Hades. What's Hades? It's the prison of the spirits who die without Christ. In fact, um, just about every other Bible translation says Hades. It's not lake of fire. You understand? Yes. But I want to ask you then, uh, does that mean that nobody will ever suffer in hell? Well... You know, God uh, my see... Because now it looks like it's not fair. All the people who transgress <laughs> and reject Christ and live a horrible life, they don't get punished. They say God might see fit to let them suffer a little period, yell and scream. And so maybe what Bill we saw are the people who would be cast in the lake of fire and they would yell and scream. I don't know how long, how many seconds, how many minutes or what, how many days. We don't know that. God knows how many, how long they should suffer before they actually die. What does it mean that the soul dies? They, they, the soul dies and disappears. So then, Brother Joseph, if I understand right, the first death is that of the flesh, of the body, which goes in the cemetery. And when he talks about the second death, is the soul the that soul. dies. But like Isaiah 66 was the most clear to me what it says, the corpses will burn the forever. Dead, the dead and when bodies. Jesus talks about the everlasting fire, that it's is never quenched. It's warm and fire. Now, why, if the soul dies, why does the corpse have to be burnt forever? Why can it everything disappear? You know why? You have Isaiah 66? Or shall I read it? No, you? I have it. Okay, read 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. Okay, For that's it. So here is the key. They shall go and look upon the dead bodies, upon the carcass. In yes. other words, uh, as a, a symbol, a signal, a warning, be careful. This is what happens to those who rebel against God the Creator. Well, Brother Joseph, all this to me doesn't sound like very good news for the atheists. I mean, they're going to die. Okay, but that's nothing to do, it's not God's fault that they rejected Jesus Christ the Savior. Okay, it's their fault. I know, yes. Jesus went all the way to Calvary to, to make it easy for them. Yeah. If they reject Jesus, well, they deserve to go to hell. But here is the good news for them. It is good news that they don't yell and scream and suffer for eternity. I mean, how many people in this world that they uh, commit suicide because they are suffering for a divorce, uh, they lost their children, their wife also took the children away, this and that, they have to support, uh, or maybe they are depressed, or they commit suicide, uh, are seeking a form of relief. Then they end up in the other world, which is worse than this, uh, and then they cannot even commit suicide, understand? Just yeah, waiting yeah. for the lack of fire. Imagine having to boil and burn for eternity and scream for eternity. I think it's good news for those guys. I mean, God loves even his enemy. God loves even uh, the people who burn in hell. God has love even for, for, uh, for the devil and his demons and the lost, uh, not to make them scream and yell and suffer for eternity. I think it's God's mercy. That is God's love, yes. It's God's mercy that he just puts a stop to the suffering and that's it. And they disappear. Amen, amen. Amen. Praise well, God. Thank you, Jesus. The scriptures are clear. In Isaiah 66, that was a very good scripture. God bless you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was a revelation that gave me just, just recently. Yes. Amen. I flipped me and said, praise God. That <laughs> I have an answer for the Satanists. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Praise God.